And we're back with another episode. I want Gucci, I want Louis at the same damn time. Dude, future is so toxic. <laughs> See, ever, that's the best thing she ever about, did. Uh, what you call it? Cheating on him. I mean, hey, cheating on her. And I'm like, he would never. He Russell? Yeah. Oh, no, he would never. There's some rumor about uh, some girl, some hoe. Um, Once upon a time, not long ago, I was, I was a, a hoe. hoe. And, and I'm admitting it. it. Russell would never cheat on her. No. He's not allowed. No. In the court of public opinion, he left he would a lose. white woman to get a black woman. He and is not going to cheat. It never happens, and it did with him. He knows. <sighs> Ridiculous. Anyway. All right, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Face Off with Fleming and Fowler. Bum, bum, bum. Fleming and Fowler. We really need to get a theme song. If y'all want to make our theme song, we know you're our- all sitting at home on the edge of your seats, editing, yes. producing, and waiting to make us a song. Absolutely. Here's your send chance. Us, send us your drafts, okay? Send it to our DMs or email us at thefaceoffpod at gmail.com. We'd like to hear so we can play your theme song for us every episode. I want it to be uh, That's So Raven mixed with you can see into the future the can- life, life will be a breeze I was life t- is not a breeze. okay i was literally mixing that and kim possible together <laughs> okay well <laughs> i want our song to sound like any of that but with like a drake backbeat you know he does the kind of like jamaican dance hall but with an 808 and like drops the main beats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he appropriates everything. Yeah, definitely. That's why he dated Rihanna. That's Very why true. she allowed him did to they have even her time. Really date? Is that even really real though? I don't know. But did you, can we stop? Because have you heard all the shit about, okay, so with all the two albums dropping, Donda and Certified Lover Boy, yeah. which, whatever. <laughs> did you hear all the shit about how they think Aesop Rocky is the one who ended up telling Pusha T about Drake's baby? And no. he's the one who started all this shit. And he's just sitting back and laughing. Basically. And now, and now fucking Rihanna. I love it. It's great. It's a great plot. The plot thickens. I fucking love it. That he was just like. Pss, pss, pss. That's a man who knew what he wanted and he went after uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. You got a brother? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Rakeem. <laughs> <laughs> Not joking. <laughs> <laughs> Have your people call our people. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. um. Yeah, that's no, no. I have not heard that, but that that'll be a great a yeah. Take source on per sources, allegedly he yeah. was in the studio with Drake when Drake was talking about his son, mm-hmm. and then he was in the studio with Pusha, and it got mentioned to him, and then that's how the beef started. Interesting. I just know that Pusha T, he just demolished Drake. That's all I know. And that damn diss, I was like, God damn. Well, brother. supposedly. Pusha T and all these other people don't like Drake because they think he just uses other rappers and he saves all the good shit for himself. And well, he, he could, does. He has a ghostwriter. Yeah. Everybody knows and he that. Could promote, he could be promoting all these people and helping all these people who help him, but he just doesn't fucking like It's because he's light-skinned. That's really it. It's because he's light-skinned. I mean, but, but uh, he's been able to capitalize on what he does and he's been able to really change the game. So, I mean, I don't think he's the best rapper alive. I, I no. definitely don't. I mean, he's, I think he's okay at what he did. I'm thinking he's, I won't say that. I won't take discredit him. I think he's great at what he does. Um, but yeah, I mean, if the fans like it, they like it. If the people like it, they like it. I also think he was probably given a lot of shit when he was coming up because he was this little light skinned Jewish boy from Canada and Mm -hmm. everyone was like, fuck you. So he's probably like, well, fuck y'all now. Yeah. Because when he was on Degrassi, he was probably, I'm white. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then he went to rap. He's like, no, 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 it's my black side. I'm black. Black side. His daddy don't make it no better. Dude, I remember I saw him in 2009. At a concert? At a concert. Really? He. Um, it's not even that he opened for Lil Wayne. Like he came out with Lil Wayne because it was a Young Money tour. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sung Mrs. Officer with Weezy, when I get in a, and he um, sung the yeah. Bobby Valentino part. It wasn't even we, like a Drake. We, we. Thing. It was highlight of my life. And I was like, ev- literally everyone in the whole stadium was like, "Is that Jimmy? Is that Jimmy from Degrassi? <laughs> Did he get shot on Degrassi? Yes, wheelchair <laughs> Jimmy. Oh, he was in a wheelchair." Yes, because oh. he got shot and then oh, he was paralyzed. Poor guy. poor guy. You never watched Degrassi? No. Oh, that no. was like my sneaky show. When did that come out? That, that was probably in college when that shit came out. Um, If I was in like middle school, high school, you might have been in college. Yeah, I was in see. college. Yeah. It was Degrassi first generation, but it was on, do you remember the N? No. Noggin? Okay. So like. I didn't watch Nickelodeon like that growing up. Okay. Because we didn't have cable. So, <laughs> understandable. Wasn't an option. <laughs> it started in 2001. I was in first grade. I was in 11th grade. I remember watching it in like middle school. Mm-hmm. 11th grade going into. So, uh, the grade. thing was, it came on, and I'm pretty sure I could be making this up. You probably are. From what I remember, it ca- That looks like Ariana Grande. But that sh- probably is her. Surely it's not. She was on one of those shows. 
Um, she was on Victorious. Get real. I have never heard of. It. Okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> Nick. It was okay. So Nickel. You know how it was Nickelodeon and Nick at Night. Yeah. Okay. So there was also like a spinoff channel, Noggin, and then it would be the N at Night, and that's when like. The juicy shows came on and the Degra- niggas at night fucking racist. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Degrassi was like the like risque show because they would talk mm. about sex and they would make out and they would sneak out and they would talk about drugs and so like we would have to watch it when our parents were asleep. My best friend and I. And Sounds she, like a ripoff of Saved had, by the Bell. It was. She had cable and I didn't, so we'd watch it at her house. Mm, interesting. But the show was fucking good. I still remember when he got shot. School. Sh- one of my first school shooting experiences. Really. Mm-hmm. The only one, but. See, I'm I'm just thankful that in my generation, well, my generation, we don't really deal with school shootings like that at my particular school. Um, I mean, obviously, Columbine happened when I was in school. That was really, you know, horrible and all that kind of stuff, right? But um, at a black school, you just have fights all the time. And then sometimes you'll have, like, you know, the islands go against each other. So I remember we had this one huh. thing. This was when I was in uh, 11th grade, so it was 2011. And I'm 2000, 2001, Jesus. Chill, chill. And, yeah, 2011, I was definitely in PT school. But uh, 2001, and it was like the Jamaicans versus the Haitians, and like they would just go around, like, you know, there was like a stabbing that happened at our school and bullshit. But fuck? I mean, that was a norm. I went to school with people who were, you know, from the hood. So it was fine. I went to a black yeah. school, a black ass school. Dude, no, Degrassi, he got shot. This girl got syphilis. What there was the just fuck? like, there was crazy shit always popping up. It's Canada, man. Crazy shit happens in Canada. Oh, so Degrassi was like, fit, like, the, it's the, a Canadian it was station. show. Oh, I thought Canada. that was an actual like American show. That's interesting. No, it's see, all we had to deal with was uh, "Say by the Bell" when Jesse Spano took those sleeping pills. To mm. I'm so excited. She annoys me for I'm some so reason. Excited. What's the um the movie she was in where she's like a showgirl? I have no clue what you're talking about. Fuck. She was in a movie about like like being a showgirl. No way. Yeah, Jesse Spano. Oh no. Am I lying? Hold on. She was a valedictorian at Bayside High. <laughs> <laughs> How dare she? Shaking her ass for money? Jesse, what the fuck is yeah, wrong with you? Please, I, people at home are yelling, Showgirl. It's literally called Showgirls. No you way. You never saw it? No. Oh, my God. What would Mr. Belding think? What the fuck, Jesse Spano? Please watch this quickly. We can cut this out. It's just very important that you see it. She's Whoa. a literal showgirl. Jesse Spano, so she didn't go to co- her tits are out. Oh my god, <laughs> she didn't go to college. She didn't go to college. I've never seen this movie. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. I'm a dancer. No way. Her ass is out. What the Dude, fuck? Yeah, she's the biggest showgirl. Okay, you gotta cut it off of the what you call it. Jesus, yeah, fix but it. You should watch. Yeah. No, I cannot watch Jesse Spano. No. Yeah, dude, she's no. wild in that movie. She will forever be Jesse Spano, okay. valedictorian. She, she was always on top of her and books. She went to Vegas. Clearly, she was on top of some other shit. Hey, nasty. How dare fucking Jesse? God damn it. <sighs> I'm just my childhood was ruined. God Sorry. damn, I never knew that. Don't know how we got here, but never knew that. Here wow. We are. Screech is dead. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm not laughing at death. I'm just the way I segue. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, let's go ahead and get into, into it. the thick of it. Yeah. Speaking of yeah, ad libs. Cardi B had her baby with I did Offset. See that it is a season for babies with the same man. I'm sensing a theme. It usually it's doesn't happen. Family. <laughs> is that? It's, it's just to. so weird for me. Yeah, it's supposed to happen that way. <laughs> huh, interesting. Well, same it's w- happening. Same way with, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kylie? Kylie fucking Jenner. And that girl on TikTok is the one who broke the pregnancy. Did you see all that? No. Did, she posted this video and she was like, so listen, Kylie's been posting pictures, none of the face, or like only of the face, none of the body, nail polish is the same, as in she's been taking, she took a bunch of pictures These at one time. These people got too much fucking too time, much time on Too much time, they're like, you know, she, she changes her nails sucks. once a week, she's been posting this, this, and that, and then literally a week later, Kylie released the pregnancy video. If she hid her pregnancy the first time from you weird ass people, she's gonna do it again, because you're just as weird. The fact she's that you're looking at somebody's one, nail though. polish, come on. She's out with her baby bump now, her and Stormy are rocking honestly and still ain't paying nobody else's bills but hers that's true stormy is the cutest fucking kid i swear to god yeah she all right my nephew's cuter he is i will give you that thank you um but yeah i guess congratulations to these girls who have more money than their mans and Definitely. Getting knocked well, up. Mm, Cardi B, I mean, you don't think she has more money than offset mm, i think she does now 
Yeah, I think she does. I now. think she does now because of all the sponsorships and things, sponsorships and things that she's had or that she has. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's amazing, you know. And she had a boy. That's yeah, that's, that's so fun. cute. I hope maybe Kai. I hope what the fuck? Like I care. Maybe Kylie. Will you do care. Too. You want to babysit I'm the baby? Invested. You want to do OT I on the baby or some shit? Who oh knows? my <laughs> god! Can you imagine if that baby needed therapy? I wouldn't be able to concentrate. No, you have cameras all on you. I would, but I would just be like looking at everything. I wonder what she smells like. Oh my god! You're obsessed with people. I'm obsessed with what rich people smell like. I feel like that's the most interesting thing. You always keep... Did you... Speaking of what rich people smell like, Rihanna, did you Ooh. buy her fragrance that came out? No. I heard bad reviews about it. I people were saying that it was, not that it was not that great of a smell that people should go hype over and... Yeah, no. You know, but the fact that she My thing is, amazing. I know what her perfume that she wears smells like. What does she wear? She wears um, Killian, the marshmallow one. What so she smells called? like marshmallows? I want to call it love don't cost a thing, but that's not what it's called. Your love don't cost a thing. Dude, you know it's on? That's on Netflix. You know that, right? What? I think it's called Love Don't Be Shy. Oh. Um, But Love Don't Cost a Thing is on Netflix. You're obsessed with Christina Milian. Yeah, I didn't think I was, but I bring her up so you, you often. You do. That you bring her up just as much as the Kardashians. And You're I really, obsessed. I like, I think her daughter is so cute too. Her daughter is cute. So with the dream. Oh gosh. She looks just like the dream with hair. Yeah. I love like Like her I, round face She's yeah, so cute she's She looks so like cute. a cabbage patch She's so cute That's okay I'm gonna say it I'm obsessed with Christina Milian It's fine Don't judge me here I'm obsessed with Miss, Miss Pat So you That's know true. Yeah Still don't know where we're going with this I don't either I don't We can't even rewind the tape Anyway <laughs> Play <laughs> back on. Play back Right <laughs> Well um, let's get into some stuff That's going on uh, Here in Texas specifically <laughs> Oh god this t- this state, like I said on the last podcast, uh, Texas and Florida are the same state. It really is. One just has tacos. The other one has beans and rice. That's it. It's and a just, beach. And a beach, yes. And um, so this past or week, week before last, um, recently, fucking I'll just say it like that. <laughs> Texas has been in the news, national news, probably even world news because of the idiotic bill that was passed uh, recently that really overturned uh, Roe v. Wade. For those of you who doesn't know, who don't know what Roe v. Wade is, um, it is to protect women's rights to choose whether or not they want to have an abortion without having any um, uh, criminal consequences, right? And it's also, too, that um, trying to define, well, when does life happen and all that bullshit? Mm -hmm. No one gives a shit when the fuck life happens. If you're not carrying a fucking baby, you shouldn't have a fucking opinion about it. But anyway, so Greg Abbott, with his dumb, stupid ass, who everybody just wants to kick out of that fucking wheelchair, literally made, uh, you know, he signed this, this bill into law. And as a result, it has caused, I mean major outrage the white women are upset listen and the black the women of color just like we told y'all we told you dumbasses mm-hmm. that this shit was gonna happen and y'all oh that's just locker room talk where people are talking about grabbing by the pussy huh? okay and now they coming after y'all pussies welcome you're gonna have to have, you're gonna be dealing with chad for a long time chad and wire hangers i'm, I'm quite sure the price of wire hangers is about to go up and um it's just amazing to me that first of all okay so we let me ask you this question. Are you for, or are you pro-choice or pro-life? Um, For me specifically, yeah. how much money does the father have? <laughs> I, I'm i quitting this podcast. I'm fucking quitting this podcast. Is he or is he not doesn't a matter. citizen of this country? It doesn't matter. You lay down with him, so that's your life choices. Okay. I'm thinking of myself, and if I laid down and made this conscious, conscious decision... And the sperm was strong enough to bypass my IUD. Oh my god! <laughs> I would have no choice but to keep that baby. It is the surely the sperm that won. I, hate I you. am. Uh, I you know I hate commitments and decisions. So I am pro. Do what the fuck you want. With so your pro body. choice. You're pro choice, right? Okay. I am pro choice as well. Okay. I believe that a woman has the choice to choose. If that she sounded like a silly straw. I know, right? If she wants to keep the baby or not. It doesn't matter if what well, a man, well, I want to keep my child. Well, bitch, carry it in your uterus and you can deliver it out of your penis. Okay? When that happens, then you can have an opinion about whether or not somebody keeps a baby. Childbirth is still the number one cause of death in women in the world. Absolutely. It's fucking scary. There is a whole child this close to your visceral organs. No, it's not a child. It's a parasite. 
That's true. It's, it's just feeding on your shit. That's Literally. what's tripping me out. So in the hospital, we've been having a lot of uh, super early pregnancies or emergency yeah. sections mm-hmm. and stillborns because um, I'm just like, I see normal people that get COVID, right? Yeah. And it's bad. I cannot imagine something living inside of you already sucking the nutrients out of your body yes. and your oxygen. And like that shit is, I cannot fucking it's toxic. imagine. It's it toxic. Is. They're beautiful. They're beautiful, wonderful beings. However. They are. And I know pregnancy is beautiful and babies are beautiful. And a lot of women try very hard to have children and yeah. cannot. But uh, you, that should never be forced on anyone who doesn't want it. It's also shitty to be that child and be like oh my mom was forced to fucking have me well i think too i think you have to look at it from this perspective um unfortunately with this particular bill with this ban on abortion well let me just tell you this uh tell you the specifics about it so it is now in the state of texas illegal to have an abortion after six weeks which you don't even realize you're pregnant until a exactly. couple weeks. And then it takes you two weeks to get an appointment at your doctor. Exactly. In which case, you're already at six weeks. Exactly. And not only that, this bill does not protect against women of who are uh, the resultant of sexual assault and rape. So if you get pregnant by a rapist, you are fucking screwed. Who cares? There's no provision for that. My thing and is, Greg, if I'm, in, I'm married and my husband's a fucking psychopath. Doesn't matter. And he's gonna super have abusive, abuse. and I finally decide to leave him. And as I'm like packing my bags, I finally get out, and then I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm pregnant." Yeah, you're gonna have to deal with it, according to tech, uh, according to Greg Abbott. What really fucked and, me up though is like the Uber driver, the people working there, anyone you tell, your fucking best friend that yes. made the appointment for you. So we can go after all those. That's fuckers. also a part of the bill. Of the bill too is that um, any person who aids and a beds in someone having an abortion in the state of Texas, you can call a hotline number and basically snitch and hotline get up to bling their ass. and get, and you can get a reward and you, the person who helped them, whether it's a doctor, cab driver, Uber driver, they literally will be fined $10,000. It's the fucking reward. Like, are you kidding me? It's like putting a bounty on uteruses. It's, Uteri? Uteruses. 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 Yeah, I think uteruses. it's uteruses. I don't think it's uteruses. Is it just one uterus? No, uteruses. Hmm. I think it's uteruses. Anyway, either way, so that's what's going on in this Texas right now. This is some right purge ass shit. It's Handmaid's Tale, and you know what the thing is too. When people talk about Handmaid's Tale, I really want people to understand that Handmaid's Tale is nothing but black women's story with white faces um, on top. And Rand was just like, "This shit's coming." And, dystopian no yeah and the thing is you know there are so many uh white women that are out there that are just like you know we we have to rise up together as women uh, we need the black women and the hispanic women and the people of women of color we just like no nah, that's y'all fight this is not a reproductive issue um, as much as people make it actually, out to be it's not increasingly black women are having children later in yes. their lives where they are more financially stable and in committed relationships. So this is increasingly a white issue. And not only that, the reason why it's a white issue is because people of co- women of color, specifically black women have the highest mortality rate mm-hmm. for birth. Okay. Per capita. And I mean, we, we got higher numbers in the United States than third world countries. It makes no fucking okay. sense. Plan. First of all, there white couple, men sorry. white men have been trying to exterminate the black baby since the beginning of fucking time. This ain't a black issue. This ain't a black woman issue and black women are tired of coming to the aid of motherfuckers in this country and it is not reciprocated. White women sat back. I'm not saying all white women, okay? So let me calm my voice down. I'm not saying all <laughs> white women. But Ooh, last ha. year, last year, when all of that stuff happened with George Floyd and when black women specifically were marching in the fucking streets, telling y'all motherfuckers that these people are trying to kill the shit out of us. Mm-hmm. Y'all sat back and was, well, just comply. Well, then just comply with what the fuck Greg Abbott said. This ain't a reproductive issue. This is not a black issue and it's not a woman's issue. This is a white woman's issue. You know why? Because black and brown women have been telling white women for years, stop trusting these motherfuckers. And y'all white women kept literally going behind the, or not even behind backs. You've been doing it boldly. Y'all 58% of white women in this country voted for Trump. Uh, grab a mother pussy. You don't want your pussy grab now? 
I thought it was locker room talk. <laughs> well, you need to put that aside and just come together as one. No, motherfuckers. No. No, it's time. Pay the piper. It's not the black babies they're trying to keep. No. And raise. It's y'all's babies. Didn't they we don't just, want y'all killing off your babies. Didn't we just say last week that the Caucasian race has decreased by 8%? <laughs> They're like, oh, no, bitch, we got to do something about it. We're they said, said enough. well, those black girls got to college and they stopped having kids, so we don't need to worry about them. But these white girls over yeah. here, you're still going to Planned Parenthoods in the hoods. And Thank you. And black boys on the way out, so we got to stop that. Thank you. And if you would just invite the big penis black brothers into your families, maybe your children wouldn't try to have abortions. I mean, I'm just saying y'all put Planned Parenthoods in black neighborhoods specifically to eradicate black lives. And your little white daughters done bought their asses over there killing all these chads and bins. And now you're like, God damn it. We got to do something about it. And it just amazes me how men who don't have a uterus, continue to make decisions for those who have it's just in the same breath you're telling me that you as the government have the right to tell me what i can do with my body with my organs and you're also telling me that i do not specifically need to wear a mask because it's your choice to prevent a disease that is killing me and everyone around me mm-hmm. because that's my choice but it's not my choice whether for nine months i have to carry on this child then provide for them for 18 years and that's yeah. if i survive the delivery as do they I, and, I, and I, don't, I think that's the biggest thing too it's like care you know i i have not had kids yet and i do desire to have children the problem is that i worked in labor and delivery postpartum labor and delivery right for four years when i was an undergrad came out and worked in two OBGYN offices, right? Women go through some serious shit. Like you don't understand what it means to carry a fucking life in your body and still be thotting and bopping around, you know, carrying on your responsibilities. You literally have a parasite that is trying to suck the life out of you in order to survive. Who gonna happen to come out and be cute and smell like Johnson and Johnson baby lotion. And thank God for your bonding hormones. I mean, your body. And that's if you're not postpartum, if you don't right. have depression when you have it, if you're financially stable, if you have a partner to support thank you, you, if you have a family system, if you have everything in place, it's still fucking hard. It's hard. Look at Kim Kardashian. I remember the first time Kim Kardashian got pregnant, right? And, or with, what's her oldest daughter's name? North. Northwest. And she Which, is a who? She was, that girl looked like she was huge. over it. Her got all were huge. Got all the money in the world. Looked like she was walking around with preeclampsia, goddammit. And you know what she did? She had one more and then was like, I'm hiring someone. I'm hiring, I'm done with this shit. Even Beyonce. Beyonce has had, again, we're talking about rich people who got all the money in the world, who can sit on their ass and do absolutely nothing. And this woman still had a miscarriage. And I'm and when she was pregnant with them twins, she was looking like, bitch, I'm over this shit. I'm done. We ain't having no more kids. Uh-huh. Jay-Z, God damn it. You got your three. We out. Dude, it's those videos for me when like someone comes behind the pregnant lady and off weights the belly. Isn't that sweet? It's so sweet, but just the relief they feel, I'm like, oh, fuck that, And you're dude. walking around for nine months like... You can't hold anything down. You can't eat. And then to not have protection for, first of all, to put this bill in place anyway is stupid. But then also to to not even have provisions available for women who are victims of rape is mm-hmm. fucking disgusting. And then Greg Abbott, <laughs> Greg Abbott, I just want you to roll off the tallest cliff you can ever find. This idiot says, <laughs> I, this idiot says, I promise to take all of the rapists off the street. That's how we're going to deal with it. And I'm like, so here's the thing for me. So like, I think everyone's first inclination, what we're going to latch on to is rape, right? Like I'm forcibly having sexual intercourse with someone. It leads to a child. I no longer can abort that child. I'm stuck with this product of a Mm -hmm. traumatic event, but I'm just like, what about people with intellectual disabilities exactly who are abused or enter into relationships yeah. knowingly can't take care of statutory their children, rape situations with statutory young teens. rape situations just like all of incest these things, i mean abusive Jesus. marriages yes. where you don't want to be in a marriage anymore and he forces you to and then you're stuck with a child and you can't provide for it on your millions of things that can happen it's or just like hey i go out and get drunk and have a one night stand and then i'm fucking pregnant with this guy i don't even fucking know and people just keep talking about this like you know these diehard republicans and white men are just like well you know who, who's gonna protect the rights of the baby okay so let's let's say this you put this bill into effect all these women have these children and then they give them up for adoption because that's what's going to happen if they don't kill them, you know, do start overwhelm going back to coat system. hangers and shit. And it's going to overwhelm the foster care system. And then you're going to be paying more money in taxes 
to care for all of these abandoned children when meanwhile you ain't adopting none of these motherfuckers or you're not even, even better, following them in the system you're forcing me to have this child that i can't provide for therefore i'm on government assistance which Thank you're gonna you. have to pay for but that's just me being lazy and we're trying to get rid of all these government programs because people are just being lazy but you're right. gonna force me to have this kid. as opposed to just three hundred dollars bim bam boom call it a day right like you it just it makes no i just don't I, and that's not even to I say hate people the thing is it's not even that there's these overwhelming there's overwhelming numbers of people having a, of women having abortions and how could we take this away it's your fucking choice it really is i could want to have a baby tomorrow and next month be like i never want to have a child in my fucking life yeah because it's my body and i should be able to do what the fuck i want with it absolutely and the, the option to be available if you are allowed to be in a hospital and say take me off of life support that's why we have dnrs that's why you have dnrs because it's your your body your choice your choice but then you want to sit here and say it's your choice if you want to wear a mask or not you should not be forcing people to wear a mask and why are you forcing women to have children that they don't want to have and then you try to say well you need to be more sexually responsible what the fuck does that mean my thing is you care about the life of the child that child would have no life without my body but if my body could not carry it to term then that child does not have a life so you want you want to bring up a child into this world whose mother and father did not potentially want them because of whatever their circumstance is. We don't even care what it is. Potentially abusive. Thank treated you. like shit. And then you end up being a career criminal and just, well, I guess maybe you do want more, another body in the prison system because it's privatized anyway. Private you're making more mother, prisons. Motherfucking money. And that's why they push rap music, gangster rap music. Which I happen to love. I do too, that's but awesome. I also don't have criminal behavior or background. I'm not trying to make it out the streets. We're all one decision away from jail. Just saying. I'm saying that no serial killer just became a serial killer. They all had horrible trauma in their childhood and abusive parents who didn't want them and were forced to have them. Yeah. I'll leave you with that. I just think it's funny, like on, on TikTok, how um, <laughs> funny and sad at the same time that, you know, some of these women, these white women on TikTok are just like, y'all need to come together. We're, we're going to protest. And the first thing y'all motherfuckers do is not create a plan, not create an agenda. Y'all like, hey, what T-shirts are we going to make? <laughs> I'm just like this is why we can't fuck with y'all <laughs> because you don't come with any strategy three women from black Li like created the black lives matter movement that went globally okay internationally you had people in france that were marching in the fucking streets okay it's crazy it's insane and i'm just like this reproduct this reproductive issue and i'm using you know air quotes it's not a real reproductive issue because black and brown women, again, have been. T Remember, I said that on the on the podcast uh, probably eons ago that the people who win elections in this country are not white men. It's white women. It's white women. White women skew elections all the time because they continue to want, and it's it's almost like they have this um this desire. This is just my personal opinion. Some women, not all white women. I'm not saying that. Um, some white women in this country. You know how back in the day with the, when the white man had all of this power, right? Um, especially when it came to the uh, back in the day enslaved. Or today? Well, today, but but back in the day, um, you know when they when people were enslaved, right? Black people were enslaved, and the white women had to sit back, powerless, to a degree, while their white men did all of this stuff, right? And it's almost like um, I even saw this video about this lady was saying, "Oh, well, what would it be like if women, you know, ran the world and." We're in charge of like, you know, the work schedule and all that kind of stuff. And it was like, it actually be, probably be worse because you're always trying to prove a point that you're equal with this particular person versus just having the ideas yourself, implementing it and calling it a day. And it's just like with this particular situation, white women trying to call on black women, you know, black and brown women to say, y'all need to join in and we just need to put our differences aside. No, 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 no. Because when, when they, when they're still killing our men and women in the streets, your only response was, and again, it's not all, it's some of them. Your response was, well, just comply. And the minute that something affects you and your daughters, now all of a sudden it becomes everybody else's issue. Well, it's not everybody else's issue. This is an attack on, this abortion ban in Texas, in the state of Texas specifically, is a, an attack on white women's reproductive systems. Mm -hmm. It's not on women. It's on specifically white women in the state of Texas. I will say an overwhelming majority of the white men in this state specifically that are making these decisions were raised by white women. 
Absolutely. So. And they're boomers. Didn't I just say the I'm boomers let, are ruining the I'm everything? I'm going to let y'all take that. Yeah. Seriously. I, I agree 100%. I agree 100 And then, you know, you have people who are, um, when they find out, like, who has donated to Greg Abbott and, you know, to this particular bill and all this other kind of stuff. People are like, oh, I'm no longer using AT&T. Oh, I'm stupid. not drinking Coca-Cola. Listen, the dude, Papa John's called us niggas. And I just had Papa John's on Monday. You think I'm about to give up Papa John's? You didn't call me a nigga to my face. I don't give a damn. You said this shit. And you even make if pizza. you did, it would have to be a hard R and a weird situation. And, and I'm going to cuss you out and I'm still going to eat your pizza. I would order it under a different name, but I'd still order it. It's fucking Papa John's. It's shit. Dude, Papa John's is good. It's the it's my favorite delivery pizza. Paula Dean. I got Paula Dean pots right now. I don't give a shit. I didn't do all that. I'm just saying, you. we shop at, un, until you cannot sit here and say, well, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to stop this. Just like Killer Mike said years ago. If you don't know how to grow your own food, make your own cell phones, create your own cars, shut the fuck up with this fake outrage. Just Here's stop. Here's the thing. I know a lot of gay people still eating Chick-fil-A, and I'm not even Hell upset because yeah. I'm eating too. Hell yeah. Shit's good. Walmart, you know, does not, allegedly, does not support <laughs> uh, women advancing up in leadership. Really? And guess where I was two days ago? Wally Mart. Swiping that card. Swipe, swipe. <laughs> 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 yo i listened to an hour and a half podcast about how amazon has these horrible fucking workshops the conditions are awful for the fulfillment centers mm -hmm. the reason prime is able to be a thing is because they work these people to the fucking bone they had this whole group of pregnant women who all lost their babies because yeah. they had horrible working conditions i prime like a motherfucker i just bought something yesterday literally <laughs> i watch amazon prime i order like 16 things a day and it is not right yeah and that shit is wrong but God, what what am I? What's what a girl to do? do? What are you gonna do? What's a girl to fucking do? What are you gonna do? It's just like even like when when Gucci last year made uh, on the backs of the Black Lives Matter movement, how they ha remember they came out with this this uh, head thing or whatever that was like a scully, but then it had like like uh, monkey lips or something like that, oh. like the big red lips, and they were like, we're so sorry, we're insensitive, and then all these rappers were like, throw away all your Gucci. Oh yeah, and everyone Bitch, was like, what, Gucci? <laughs> first of all, Gucci is expensive, okay, and if I own Gucci. I'm not Bitch, I paid my money. That's just like burning a LeBron James jersey because he left Cleveland. Bitch, I paid fifty dollars for this jersey. I don't give a fuck where Dude, you went. They're like a hundred dollars. Oh, they ain't fifty dollars a month. No, <laughs> shit, they're not. See, we went when we went to the uh, we went to the red or the White Sox game, mm -hmm. White Sox Cubs, and I was like, yeah, I fucking love the White Sox now. Huge fan. Let me buy a jersey. Yeah, that shit was one hundred twenty dollars. Shit, I was like, not that big of a fan. No, listen, even. R. Kelly. I still I'm not throwing away that man's album. The man made good music. I won't stream it, but goddammit, that see that compact <laughs> disc I got in my car. Well, that's my thing. Don't give the man any more streams. No. If you own the album. I paid my sixteen ninety nine for the step in the name of love, motherfuckers. I'm not, but I'm step I'm not no, nope, we're not doing it. We're not doing it here. Did you see uh, he's credited on Drake's song TSU? I did see that and people were outraged about it. Yo. So let me tell you, I was, credits, though. I was listening to the song and I was just scrolling through. I like to scroll through to the end to see yeah. who has the credits. Mm -hmm. And I fucking saw that and I was like, Robert fucking Kelly. Maybe it's another Robert Kelly. I was like, everyone's going, no, it's R. Kelly. I was like, everyone's going. Is, it, real, is it confirmed that it's actually him? Yeah. And I'm assuming it's yeah. just a sample or something. But I was like, damn. You wanted to use that. But I. Oh, see what I'm saying? The fake outreach. I can't take it. Mm -hmm. I can't. Like, the man's music has helped to mold a music industry. Not even a generation, but a literal industry. So you could say the same for Kanye. Yes. I'm just personally not gonna support it. <laughs> I mean As is you're right. Yeah, but the thing is, but I don't I don't find anything wrong with Kanye West's music. I find something wrong with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the music isn't telling me to rape and murder Listen, people. Exactly. He's just so I'm not gonna wearing stream a MAGA it. Hat. <laughs> right. I'm not gonna stream it. But I just think that like even for that particular situation, as horrible as the things that he has done, not Kanye, uh, well, him too, but uh, it's not on the level of R. Kelly, obviously. A little but, different. Right. But as horrible as the things that R. Kelly has been accused of, in jail for alleged, whatever, just for the podcast, alleged to do, that still does not separate the impact that this man had on a whole industry. Like Bill Cosby. Like Bill Cosby. You will, I mean, let me tell you something. You will never, ever, ever, Ever ever, 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 ever get me to stop watching Cosby Show or A Different World. 
You just won't. That's embedded in me. Mm -hmm. That's a part of my DNA. My children will watch that shit. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever you did, that ain't got shit to do. It was, it's wrong. I condemn it. God damn it. <laughs> but one thing, two things you did get right, motherfucker. The, the Cosby, Cosby show, show and a different world. And I'm going to still watch it. Yeah. I just, here's my thing. If you're upset about something. I'm not going to his world tour next year. When he goes on tour, I'm not Which doing he that. will. You know he fucking will <laughs> because we buying, told him not to. I'm not buying tickets. I told that, that man to log out. Him and OJ going to go on tour. Yo, I would pay to see that. I would pay. <laughs> I At swear least for for the on my <laughs> life, I do not support either of those men, but God damn it. If they came out and were like, we we're taking the show on the road, I would have front row fucking seats. I, I would probably buy something. To yeah. a train wreck. No, I would, I would just... No, I wouldn't go. I would at least stream it. If, oh, if OJ God. Was on, if OJ was on the bill, I wouldn't go. But if Bill Cosby was there, I'd probably... <laughs> I couldn't stop. First of all... Oh, my God. He would only make it to one city. He would. <laughs> <laughs> you have protesters everywhere. <laughs> no venue would host him. <laughs> He would only have one, like, a one night only. It could still just be called If I Did It. It's going to be Bill Cosby, <laughs> one night only. Oh, man, That's the crazy. content. Yeah, that no, I feel like if you don't like it, don't listen to it. Yeah. On the backs of abortion. Well, if you don't have a uterus, you shouldn't tell nobody I'm else what like, the fuck to do with this. Exactly. Yeah. Let people choose. It's, I, I swear to God that God gave people free will to choose. Girl, these people, these men, I'm just like, y'all have too much time on y'all hands and to be worried about a group of people who you, like, you, you mean to tell me. Aren't people still hungry? Aren't people still poor and dying is, in the streets? If, if you're going to sit here and take away abortion, you need to take away Viagra too. Because mm. maybe that'll calm down some of these uh, pregnancies. If if God wanted your dingling to not work, it's his will, brother. Don't be over here trying to attack somebody uterus because your dingling don't work. natural family planning. That's all I'm saying. Like, jeez, people... Greg Abbott. Anyway, neither here nor there. We gotta vote this bitch out of office. God damn! I, like I'm telling you, Florida is no different from Texas. I, oh, Ron DeSantis is a fucking idiot. I, we're dealing with two idiot governors. Fucking hell! Is there nobody else qualified? Oh, sweet lamb of the Lord Jesus of Zion. Next topic that we're gonna talk about is a little. It's a little bit sad. No, first of all, let's go back to this. A little lighthearted, but sad. Rikers Island. What's going on with Rikers? <laughs> lighthearted because funny <laughs> sad because jail yeah <laughs> definitely because jail so jail sucks. they rikers island i don't know if you guys know a prison new york right i thought it was in rhode island which is, it's all fucking new york to me bitch i don't staten know anything island. about that is it on staten island listen if it's anywhere it's probably in california if it's anywhere above oklahoma it's new york R to rikers me. islands no rikers island is in staten island isn't it new jersey i don't know Let's look it up. It's between Queens and the Bronx. It's New York. What did I say? Rhode Island? You said a lot of shit and I, I said New York. I said California. Mm -hmm. Rikers Island. That just oh, doesn't totally seem right. like a good place to have a prison. It's in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rikers. Well, how did Tukey Williams get up there? We have a lot of questions. Anyway, like in it's in the anyway. Bronx. Like, should you have a prison in the mid? I don't know. That just seems iffy to me. That's probably why what's going on with it is what's going on. Anyway, <laughs> severely understaffed. So they were like, you know what? <laughs> You, you, not you, 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 and you. <laughs> Y'all are in charge for a little bit. 24 hours. There were about 80 prisoners who they decided would elevate to the role of. Oh, they legit put them in charge. They legit put them in charge for 24 hours and had them running shit because they were so understaffed. Wow. I want to know the selection process. That just seems, okay, because as we know, I used to work you in prison. prison. Yeah, uh huh. I just feel like that should involve everybody just being in lockdown. Like you should just lock the shit down. Like nobody can come out of their sales. Everybody just need to be in lockdown until we figure out a solution. But 24 hours. I mean, but I've heard. So I listened to I mean, people have gone to solitary confinement. That podcast that was like, if there's uh they were talking about, you have your, Oh, what the fuck did they call it? Basically in your room, you have a kit and it's like, cause the prison goes into lockdown sometimes if they're missing someone, if there's an emergency, yeah. whatever. And you can be locked down for like three days at times. So yeah, like you, you gotta have food in there and all mm -hmm. this shit. So yeah. What, cause I was like, Oh, maybe they didn't lock down cause it was 24 hours, but why didn't they just lock that shit the fuck down? That's what I'm saying. That just makes it very, that, that seems very weird. And, and also too, that's da very dangerous because if correctional officers, did they walk out or they were just understaffed? Like they a were hospital? critically understaffed. So 80 inmates of the units were asked to, run the units they should get out for good behavior that's what i'm saying like you're telling me i'm good enough to run the fucking prison but i can't be out exactly on my own 
Um, Who the fuck they were is the answering word? the phones. They were helping set up transpo to court answering and video phones. conferences. You wow. gotta be. Is this like a career training? Like ITT Tech? What the fuck? <laughs> that is some piss poor shit. That is insane. The ID. That is some Britney Spears shit. You're telling me wow. that I cannot be out in the real world operating my own shit. That I have to be stuck in here for my quote unquote crimes. Don't even know what these people have done. But you respect me and I'm responsible enough to fucking to run a prison. To run a prison. One of the most like dangerous prisons ever. Where you could easily be like, and released. Child, they probably ain't giving all the keys to the thing. Oh, as a correctional officer, I would be scared shitless. Let me tell you. Okay. 80, and it was 80, 80 inmates. That's a lot. It, that's almost I have been stuck in a sally port, okay, with 20 inmates before. Male inmates. And it's only two guards. One in the front bitch and one in the back. And I am a female, okay? <laughs> and I'm just like, you. Jesus. And I'm just like, please don't let no part. And this one I was skinnier, so I, you know my booty butt and all that kind of, and I'm just like Lord Jesus don't let them see nothing let them all be gay please Lord because if something pop off bitch I'm dead my thing is and Ooh, this is no Lord. judgment on anyone who has been or is currently in prison because I am a whore for prison talk it's one of my favorites <laughs> I watch it all the time I'm so interested most people who are in prison phenotypically scary scare the shit out of me big tall yeah. tattoos because they have to be. They have they to put ha- on that no. persona. And you have to be. You have mm-hmm. to wear out. Oh, you have to wear that skin. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but what the fuck? If I'm That's insane. if I walked up in that bitch and just saw y'all running shit. Bitch. If I came in for my shift and put my little <laughs> fingerprints in that little machine <laughs> and I'd be like, where the guards at? How you doing, Miss Women? We here, uh, you can go ahead and go to your office. <laughs> bitch, I'm going back to the parking lot. What the fuck? That's insane. you gotta be fucking kidding me. So I think everyone's feeling it. Fucking everyone's leaving. Everybody's burnt out. This this whole listen, this, just dismantle the entire working system. Just shut it down. They should have done said, listen, if you have less than six months left to serve and you didn't do something, what do they say on Law and Order? Egregious. Heinous. Oh, especially heinous. Especially heinous. Mm-hmm. Then you're fuck you're out. Well, they were doing that in the beginning when COVID first happened. They were letting everybody out. They need to let uh Joe Exotic out. Let him out. All right, he he is he, he in Rikers? I'm pretty sure he, he tried to get someone killed. No, he didn't. He's at Rikers? I don't know. You're just making shit up now. He didn't try to get anybody killed. He tried to kill Carol Baskins. They have him on tape. Did allegedly. He? Exactly. Did he? He's not even in jail for that. He's in jail for killing a tiger. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, that's pretty bad. But too. veterinarians put down animals all the time, and they don't go to jail. Free Joe Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Is that the hill you're gonna die on? Yes, free that man. Wow. He loves tigers, and lions. Oh my, and bears. And bears. Oh my. <laughs> Carol Baskin been pushing his buttons for years. Oh damn you're it. right. He is in prison for animal abuse. What See, are the odds he's not even that? in jail for the hit because they couldn't prove it. <laughs> if you can't. Wait, if the glove doesn't fit, you must you quit. Must quit. Free Joe Exotic. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, I just thought that was fucking insane. That's some Shawshank shit. Yeah, that's horrible. I, again, when I worked in the prison, it was the inmates were in there, like you know, serving like the people who get out for good behavior. Serving they, humanity. They, no, they were ser- <laughs> serving humanity. <laughs> Donald God. <laughs> I hate you for that. Anyway, inside joke. So <laughs> you know, took me off my goddamn thought of, train of thought. Anyway, they were serving like the food and all that kind of stuff to the Uh other officers and the other inmates and whatnot. I just, oh God, just the memories I I could never. What kind, like, I'm trying to put myself in this position. If I was one of the chosen ones who got, like, surely they weren't, like, obviously they didn't have weapons and shit. They were just, like, puffed up. You think around. that they can make a weapon out of anything. That's true. Well, I'm like, surely the guards were like, here, take this. This is yours. Take the keys. <laughs> Here's the keys and a gun Spank and just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, what kind of shit would I pull? I'd just, be like, hey, what are you doing over there? You'd be doing, you bored, just bored. I mean, <laughs> making TikToks. They always be making TikToks in prison and shit. <laughs> just keep making TikToks. But yeah, that's crazy. That is Damn. insane. Oh my God. Well, I hope they got back control because, oh Jesus. Yeah. How hard would it be? I, I, that's a movie. And, cor- and correctional officers do not carry guns. They can't carry guns. Right, because someone would take it. Absolutely. They so, carry batons. Mm-hmm. They have batons and they have um, 
uh, I don't even think they have tasers. At the, well, I don't know what they do now, but I know that when I worked in a prison, they didn't have tasers either. I just feel like Rikers is the Azkaban of U.S. prisons. Like, it just sounds fucking bad. It does. Like, in New and York. San Quentin. San Quentin's so, yeah, pretty bad, too. New York is, like, a heavily populated area. Mm-hmm. Some bad shit happens there. Bunch of minorities. Bunch of minorities. Not that they're bad. It's bad situations. No, they put it there on purpose people. to lock up the minorities. To lock up the minorities. They're making license plates or some shit. Mm-hmm. That's horrible. All right. Well, I, listen, I pray Godspeed. <laughs> listen, that's why I don't work at a prison. Yeah, no. Speaking of speaking of prison or criminals or people playing criminals, segue, Michael K. Williams, man. Dude, Omar. That is some sad shit. Did you watch The Wire? I did, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. I had cable by then. Absolutely. I was in college. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love The Wire. And he was in love. Lovecraft. We love Lovecraft. That, okay. There is a curse on fucking Lovecraft country. Truly. They got dropped. And then we, oh, they might come back. And then Michael K. Williams dies. Dude. Of an alleged overdose that had allegedly fentanyl-laced drugs. So do we... Did, did he not try to overdose? It was just the fentanyl. It, it, from what social media is saying, this is not evidence based. Okay. Um, EIBP. There, yeah. There's no, no factual evidence behind this, but they say social media said that, um, I guess he had been taking recreational drugs as yeah. we all do. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, who's we, I just do CBD. That's it. Uh, my, my pop carry. <laughs> and um yeah so i guess his drugs were fentanyl laced and maybe he was not trying to overdose because his i think it was his nephew found him in his in his um uh, his house that is so fucking a scary test your drugs if you're doing recreational yes drugs. um be sad see have you you have you seen euphoria yes or no no bitch first of all, all also we haven't talked about zendaya at the fucking dune premiere did you see her outfit no jesus h christ i'll pull it up i'm talking to you yeah anyway in euphoria there's an episode do you know the gist of that show what happens yeah okay drugs so drugs sex and rock and roll drugs (laughs) drugs sex and rock and roll in the high schools um yeah so basically there's an episode where her best friend is she's um she just got back out of rehab. Mm-hmm. Her one of her best friends is a drug dealer, but he doesn't do drugs. Yeah, never get high off your own supply. No. And so she comes over fiending for drugs, and he's like, "No, I'm not going to give you anything. Get the fuck out of here. I have someone coming by." Well, he has his dealer coming by, like his big dealer. Mm. And so he's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" And she won't leave. So finally, the big dealer shows up, and he's telling her to just like sit the fuck there, mm-hmm. do not say anything. These guys are the real deal. Like they're just going to drop some shit off, pick up some money. Yeah. So, of course, like, she's fucking cute and shit, mm-hmm. and they're just fucking around, and he makes her take some fentanyl. Mm. And it, oh, the whole scene just makes me so anxious. It makes you so nervous, and you just, like, see her just fucking fade away. Here's my question. Where are you people getting fentanyl from? The screen. Because every time I see fentanyl, you know where it's at? And then I see you. <laughs> I, lock lock the fuck down locked, three people have to check thank that shit. you and not only that i can't i can't see my patient because my patient is on fentanyl and they're not a fucking wake this is them we'll walk in and we're just like I, we see all the pumps and we're just like hey how much sedation are you on and the nurse says well we're on seroquel Cer- we're on you know 50 of uh propofol we're on Lord fentanyl. Presidents. As soon as they say fentanyl, I'm like, pass, pass. It pro. Oh, that's like flesh colored. It's leather. That's leather. It's leather, isn't that wow. insane? Wow, she looks beautiful as always. But always, but wow, yeah. Um, I'll bye even bye see. Boom. I'll even see your ass on ketamine. Yeah, we I'll see s- your ass on some crazy shit. But if you fentanyl, fuck fentanyl, no. no. I'll you see can't you on do the, anything. I'll you, see you on Seroquel, Presidex, Dilaudid, because Presidex, they can turn your shit down. I don't and know. You'll come it's right really back. not nothing. It just chills you Propofol, a little bit. Propofol, you can, people break through Propofol all the time. Haldol, but fentanyl, Haldol's a little tough, but I'll get you there. Haldol, if you have dementia, Haldol, you, you gonna fight through that shit. But <laughs> most other people. But I'm just saying, that shit is rough. So I, to lace another drug with yes. it. Yes. And fentanyl. It's just your heart. I feel like your heart would just. Fentanyl is not something that like, you have to titrate that. <laughs> 
<laughs> like they're, they're not doing that. The they're, not, they're not doing it. And I'm just like, even if you put it's, it's fentanyl in pill form. Yeah, you can have fentanyl pills, right? Can I you have fentanyl? A, I thought it was a powder. It Maybe is, a powder you can put in capsules. Yeah, and I wonder if they're just no, they got to be just putting the powder on there anyway. But my thing is, bitch, you got to titrate that it because if, pills. Cause you hit that shit too hard, you are gonna die, dude. And just like my oh thing my is God. in the hospital, right? Because of course that's where we fuck i work whatever yeah it's the smallest amount it really is and it fucks you up it's like so micrograms I, it's microgrammed micro dosed yeah. like titrate with other shit so i can't imagine you're like 50 mics that's micro mcgs motherfuckers. yeah dude <laughs> mcgs so i not can't MGs. fucking imagine that's so sad and i think that's a big thing now is people are lacing their drugs with it that's why they're telling everyone like if you're going to do recreational drugs at least test them because so many people are dying just because they think they're doing regular drugs but and here, they're laced with something crazy okay here's my question for america how high are you trying to get can we get much higher what are you running from but my thing is i, I just don't get it here's the thing say you're doing a drug right and you have done the drug for a long time mm -hmm. you're not trying to get super high but like you're doing your regular amount of your drug just yeah. trying to have some fun whatever but as soon as there's even a little bit of fentanyl in that shit and you're doing the same amount of your normal mm -hmm. drug but now it's laced with this much you know what i mean that's you're like double the dose you're fucked yeah and you can't that's horrible so and especially if you're already doing drugs your heart's fucked yeah you have a massive heart attack fuck dude that sucks so bad this is why certain sedatives should not be available on streets like you i mean it goes back to Michael Jackson. This dumbass doctor giving this motherfucker a propofol IV with no that respiratory one, no. support. Like you're a fucking like come on. It it's insane. That's absolute that's horrible. When it, you're when you get sleepy from drugs, your heart slows down. Yeah, when so your that's heart not the high. Slows down, your everything else slows down too. You ain't high, you're dying. That's literally what's happening. Can we get much higher? Well, off that depressing note to another yeah. one. I'm going to so, have to rewatch The Wire now. Well, you know what else you need to watch? What? Remember? My cholesterol. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Remember Bob Ross? How could I forget? World's best painter. Beloved yeah. painter. White I man do. with the afro. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how traumatized I was watching this. White man with the Jufro for sure. Definitely. He had a little soul. So Bob Ross came into our homes all these years ago, painting nothing but fucking trees. And this man was probably, he was a millionaire making Let's fucking trees. Let's talk about cathartic. I mean, meditative. amazing, right? You go to your grandma's house and she watches TBN. TBN kind of goes off or whatever. And then she turns it on to Bob Ross. He just pops up. Hey friends, how you doing? He's like Mr. Rogers brother who just paints. Right? So I'm watching this documentary on Netflix and it starts off really well, like mm -hmm. how Bob Ross became a painter, how he got on TV, you know, his mentors, all this wonderful stuff. Right. And it's being narrated by his son. His son is on there. His son looks fucking just like him, just without the Afro. Really? And even his son made a couple of appearances on the actual show painting. And his son is a painter painting? and he makes the same paintings and he goes around and he has these like workshops. What's and his stuff. son's name? Sean Ross. Evan. I don't know. Evan Ross. That's, <laughs> that's fucking Diana Ross. It's a, I hate you. This is, I'm getting. I'm leaving. <laughs> You're stupid. Know. I can't remember. I was so traumatized. I don't remember. <laughs> so, so he's telling this story about how when Bob Ross got famous and everything, there was this lady that he met um, that I guess worked at the studio or whatever, and her son had died. And I can't remember how he died, but the son died. So she was very like lonely, and she kind of like uh, gravitated toward Bob Ross and kind of took him took him in. Not like I mean, he had money and stuff. It wasn't about that, but it was just she looked at him as a son. And so um, he started to have more notoriety and get more money and stuff like that. And so he entered into a contract with this woman. What he did not do, unfortunately, was read his contract. Oh, no. And the contract, basically, all she owns everything. The likeness, his name, everything that you see now. I don't care if it's a fucking puppet of Bob Ross. It is not his his estate does not own that. Wow. There's another white lady that owns that shit. The son never received a dime after he died from this woman. He went to court and was like, Yo, I'm trying to get my dad's estate back and all this other kind of stuff. The court was like, nah, bitch, we got to uphold it. He signed it over. Uh, and he died because he didn't care about the money. He was just like, I just love to paint. He was in the military and just, I mean, he, this man was a real, I mean, he, amazing guy, like decorated, you know, in the military and stuff. He came out of the military and was like, I just want to paint. That's all I want to do. 
God. He didn't even want to, he didn't even want the notoriety. And this lady was like, "No, you have to do this. You have to do this." And blah blah blah. And when he died, oh God, I just felt so bad for the son. Oh Jesus, I want to weep for that man. I just couldn't believe that. That's what the documentaries on Netflix lately are really fucking me. Up. I didn't watch the Naomi Osaka one because that one looks sad as shit. It is. It's depressing. This as shit. one I heard was fucking depressing as shit. It's. I mean, it's a good documentary though. It is sad, but it's it's a good. I'm document. tired of being sad. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. You know what will lift your spirits? Well, kind of. I don't know. It's mixed reviews. Clickbait. Have you seen that? No. Here's why. Let me tell you. First of all, I love that man, Entourage Ooh. man, Adrian Brody. Is that oh, his name? I don't know. I could have just made that up. He's just a random white guy. Why are we so yeah. off on information today? It's because it's Friday. It's because it's Friday. Do you remember Drive Me Crazy? Nope. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. No, not I mean, Adrian no, Brody. Not what the fuck is his name? Adrian Grenier. Right? Adrian Grenier. Oh, so close. Please. Yes, because that's a name I know in my vocabulary. Drive Me Crazy with Melissa Joan Hart. That's basically Love Don't Cost a Thing, but with white people. Oh, wow. Interesting. Nope. Never seen it. Oh, my God. So good. It's Britney Spears. Well, I've already seen the Love Don't Cost a Thing. That's true. But you know Britney Spears' song, Drive Me Crazy? Yeah. That's where that's from. Oh. Um, He's an entourage. He's Devil Wears Prada? Yes. Okay. He's the boyfriend. Oh, okay. That's like, we're all, he's the chef, and then he gets all pissed off. Okay, him. There's something about that, like, mixed couples in movies either hit it or they fucking miss it. Yeah. So like the mixed couple in Get Out, I believed it, right? Because he was more attractive than her, mm-hmm. and that's like quintessential mixed couple. Yeah. To me. Well, for those that don't know, because I don't think we give a preface, the clickbait is this movie that's on, or this limited series that's on Netflix, and it's basically about this this white husband, black wife, and a, the a sister. Um, what ends up happening is that the husband goes missing, and this I'm not. This is not a spoiler. Um, the husband goes missing, and um, when he goes missing all of a sudden this video pops up online where it basically he holds up these signs and it says oh i'm an abuser or i abuse women um and then there's another sign that he holds up that says if this video reaches five million views i die and so of course everybody's finding out about it and you're just like oh my god does he die here here's the thing i I literally stayed up till two o'clock in the morning watching this shit because i was just like i just wanted to finish it i was so pissed at the very end because i was like this was a long drawn out (laughs) six episodes oh, of a, of a I didn't fucking it criminal a yeah it's like a, it's a limited series i'm like this could have been an hour-long criminal minds episode what the fuck i was yeah. so pissed I was there like, was I never something about the again. couple when they were in the com- like the previews i was like i don't trust it it I well don't at know, first i, I thought the sister did it honestly i really did because she was just acting really weird and i was like the wife is too calm she did it the wife was really calm she was way too calm because she was a girl from uh from a uh, get out Remember the one who was like, no, 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 no. <gasps> That's, her? That's her? Why mm-hmm. does she look so old and get out? Because she was playing a white, I mean, a black woman who was taken over by white people. Oh, you, you look do. old as hell, too. That I would look older. pressure makes you look older. <laughs> huh. Okay. Yeah. So I should not watch it? I mean, it was okay, but I, I don't think it was. People was, oh, my God. It was just so mysterious. No, it wasn't. It was a long, drawn-out-ass episode of fucking Criminal Minds. There were a lot of twists and turns. And, of course, the person who ends up. Um, being responsible for it all and the the, the storyline was actually really good it was it, it kept you on your toes so you can't just watch the end and think you're gonna you know oh, just figure okay. it out you gotta watch that shit from the beginning because the person who actually is responsible you never even saw them in the movie you're like when the fuck do we see this bitch you're just mad because you missed out on sleep yes because i because it was pointless it was a, it was literally a criminal minds episode it could have been one hour see it's spooky it's not spooky. It's not scary at all. It's not scary? No. Criminal Minds is scary. I mean, if you live by yourself, yeah. Well, you live by yourself. I do live by myself. I do too, but I got guns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have guns. I read a spooky book the other night, and I was like, I got to put my alarm on. No, nah, don't read no spooky books. Mm, no shit. spooky books? No. no, yeah. I love him, and it looks good. I have not watched it yet. I mean, it's cool, but don't don't stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning. Just watch a couple episodes, and then go to sleep, and then finish it the next day. Okay. Yeah. So but, no binging. Got it, no, got it, don't got binge it. it. Uh-uh. Anything else uh, we watching? I'm watching my life waste away at this job, waiting until the next big thing. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to make some money quick, get rich quick scheme. Listen, people, if you like our podcast, donate to our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't exist, that but doesn't it will. Exist yet. Slide into our DMs. Yes. I'll give you my Venmo and then we'll get the. We'll get exactly. The we can create started. a cash app and a Venmo for our podcast. Give us the money. We can keep giving you. We can quit our jobs, and then we no, can. That's when the real give quality content. content starts. We can give you three or four episodes a week if we can stop working full time. But you gotta give. I'll go on OnlyFans. Post pictures of her feet. 
My feet are cute. I mean, I'm not right now. I need to get my feet done. Oh, so yeah, I, I need to get my feet done. I'm gonna get my nails done too, because I got turmeric all over my hands because of this mask that I've been doing. Anyway, so that's why my nails look like uh, smoker's nails. Anyway, neither here nor there. Yes. So. Anyway, no, that's it. Um, I have a quick rehab corner. For yes, you. please do. Let's go to the rehab corner. So this is addressed to my therapist friends and family out there. Um, I'm so greasy. Sorry. Greasy. My face is like greasy because I, I put um, avocado oil on my face. Anyway, greasy. Greasy. That's not how you say that. It's greasy. 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 Gre- greasy bear. Are we in a fight? What's this, what's, what does she say? Dakota Fanning and with uh, oh, I don't Man know. on Fire with Denzel Washington. Oh, greasy. Yeah. Creasy, creasy. That's a good movie. That was a great movie. Oh Damn. my god, I do love some Denzel. Oh, he acted his ass Listen. off in that movie. God. That was just a cute pair, like him and oh, she oh. was cute. Do you agree that? Did you say the thing that Michael B. Jordan is the new Denzel? No, hell no. I, Fuck no. I don't think so either. Denzel is the only Denzel. Correct. Michael B. Jordan is the only Michael B. Jordan. Stop Correct. trying to compare. I hate people who try to, oh, LeBron James is a new Michael Jordan. No, the fuck he's not. He's LeBron James and Michael Jordan is fucking Michael Jordan. No. Yeah. And that's where we stand on that. Anyway. <laughs> so I don't know about you, but there's weeks of the work where I don't get a lot of units where it's just mm-hmm. like not hitting like it's supposed to be hitting. Yeah. It's, everyone's fucking trying to crap out on you. Hypotensive. Brady Cardic. Out of surgery. Stroke. <laughs> Heart new, attack. New stroke. Diarrhea. Stroke on top of the stroke. Exactly. So you're just like fiending for units. Mm-hmm. You're trying to see people, trying to make them out of You're a happen. whore for units. Whore for units. <laughs> and it's in those moments when I make the most questionable decisions because I'm really trying to draw out a session. <laughs> and I'm like, should I be seeing this patient? Technically, I am within my right to see them. Yeah. Vitals look well enough for me to get them up. Right. If it was a gooder day. I probably would have left him alone. A gooder day? It was a badder day, so I have to get him up. Okay. And here's the thing. God bless the PTs that get stuck with me on this day. Because their <laughs> units are always fine. I don't know the one who's like, I had not seen anyone. I got to make shit happen. Even though your units are worth more, but whatever. Either they are. are. I don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. So I walk into this room. This lady just had a cabbage, and she's knocked the fuck out. And probably on fentanyl. Probably. Did she have a cabbage? She might not even have had a surgery. She might have just been knocked out. She was intubated. That's what it was. She was intubated. They That's just- another element to the story. Definitely, because that would make a difference. Absolutely. <laughs> Sleeping with a tube in her throat. Awesome. She uh-huh. had just <laughs> gotten extubated. Okay. She needed to get up. Hadn't been up in a couple of days. She was kind of, quote unquote, sleepy. Mm-hmm. I was like, everyone's sleeping. Yes, yeah. you just got to wake them up. So we're trying to wake her up, whatever. We get to the edge of the bed, finally, and she's sitting up on her own, which to me is always a good sign. Yes. To me always means we could probably make a transfer happen. Oh, Jesus. Especially when I'm low on units, and we got to really make sure this is an eval. Mm-hmm. So, of course, she's like, oh, I feel like I kind of have to go to the restroom. I have to go to the restroom. So my PT, who was doing the transfer because she is so sweet and knows I have the back of a 65-year-old woman, <laughs> <laughs> goes to transfer well first she was like well let, um i don't know if we have a bedside commode let me see mm-hmm. or grab the bedpan so i was like you know what let's just do the bedpan we'll get yeah. her back in bed she can use the bedpan because she's half asleep and she's you know whatever but on my way out of the supply room with the bedpan i see the bedside commode mm-hmm. and i was like perfect we were just talking about a bedside oh, commode. jesus let me grab it i grabbed the bedside commode we put it <laughs> up next to her so the first time the pt goes to transfer her it's, it looks pretty rough. And she's like, um, I don't know. Mind you, there's family in the room. Family's a nurse. Of course. Of I, course. I get a little nervous when there's medical family in the room because mm-hmm. they know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So in my head, I'm like, well, naturally, that transfer was hard for the PT because I wasn't helping as much as I should have. Yeah. So once I get in the right position and I help her to the bedside come on. It's going to go. Or it's going to it's going to go. Mm-hmm. If it's up, then it's stuck. When I tell you this was a total times two dependent <laughs> transfer <laughs> to the bedside commode. Oh, God. Like, we did everything. And this lady probably, she's bigger. She could have used a berry. We didn't have a berry commode. Yeah. So I had to squeeze her squeeze in. Squeeze the thighs in. So she's on the toilet. I'm like, let me go run and get the shit mm-hmm. we need. I go to get wipes and a pulse ox, all these things. By the time I come back to the room, mind you, this lady was an AFib last night. Yeah. She converted herself out. Wasn't worried about it. Walk into the room. I look at the PT's face. She goes, I, she just starts shaking her head. <laughs> I look up at the monitor. Oh, no. This lady's heart rate was 60 when I got in there. 
It is now 163. Oh, shit. Put her back. And I cannot read EKG for shit, as you know. But I sure as hell can look up at the monitor. I'm like, that is ex- that is AFib. She's probably back in AFib with RVR. RV- I'm just looking at it. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I don't miss the ICU. <laughs> and I'm just like, let's strap in and strap up because this is not good. Throw her ass back in the I'm fucking like, bed. Because I'm like, shit, dude. And we're on the bed. Like, and she's just doing that cough thing. She's like, uh, uh. I was like, fuck. I mean, she's about to go. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. So, mind you, so, and then, so I grab, it's a nurse mm-hmm. from outside in the hall. Oh, Jesus. Who never, this nurse is like, always looks like she's going somewhere. She always looks like she's in a hurry. Like, <laughs> but, but I, I gotta where, do this. Where? And it's like, you're not going anywhere. Calm down. She's never going anywhere. To, to go get her gummy worms or something. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I called the nurse who's the patient. Well, she didn't answer. So I saw this nurse in the hall. I was like, can you please come help? And she's like, okay. Because all I'm thinking is, it's us two and we can do this transfer. But if anything goes wrong, especially with her heart rate doing that. <laughs> in the 160s. We're effed. Like, I yeah. need help. We're going to need help. Mm-hmm. So then this nurse goes, what do you need help with? And the PT goes, Moral support. <laughs> Moral support. <laughs> Y'all are stupid. <laughs> and I was like, oh, dear God, dear Lord. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So the PT pull, when I tell you, this woman's probably like 230 pounds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the PT I already knew who you're talking pulls about. this lady on the bedside commode pulls it completely forward to get it closer to the O2 <laughs> line because she's like this got me after quick transfer oh I have God. to squeeze this lady in because she's too big she's gonna get stuck when yeah, we go to stand it's gonna so, come with her so I'm squeezing her in the PT's pulling her up so we can ma- we can just total transfer her back to the bed and that's when we find the towel that's been shoved between her legs and in her oh bottom my God. this entire time because <clears throat> plot twist she's been having loose watery bms for the last 24 oh hours that no one decided to tell us anything about where was the towel didn't see it on the way over no. it's just magically appeared okay so where do you think everything she's done on the toilet has gone on the towel on the towel probably on your shoes too did you get your shoes messed up? Oh, no. So we get her ass back to the bed. And along the way, there is shit on the bedside commode, on the bed linens, on the bed rail, on her. She puts her hand in it. It's oh, on the floor. Jesus. I step in it. It's fucking everywhere. Oh, my God. Get her back. She's still in and out of AFib. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Just convert to sinus rhythm already. 191. Oh, my I'm God. I'm like, please, for the love of God. And, and where's so, the nurse again? Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. <laughs> Called her. She didn't answer. When does she walk in? When we're back in bed. Of course. Okay. All cleaned up. She No, she did help clean. Oh, actually. Okay, she was like, oh my God. But um, my favorite Ow. is when you're in these emergency situations. First of all, this is all my fault. Completely my fault. I'm the one who wanted to get her up to the bedside commode. I'm the one who needed the units. Fucking OTs, man. An hour later, this was my fault. But I hope she was an eval. It was. Okay. Eval and a treat. Seven units. Hell yeah. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, Hi and a treat for peri care. Fuck Thank yeah. you. Real but too. That my there. favorite is when you're trying to make these emergency situations happen, and the nurse is like, "So, do we need? Should we clean before we go back?" I'm like, "Listen, your patient's dying. <laughs> Time is of the essence. Yeah, she can sit in the shit for ten seconds. Unless we'll clean you want to do a code blue on the floor, because I'm gonna walk out because I'm only BLS. I'm not ACLS. So, no. unless all you want to do that, all I know how to do is hit that big blue button. That's it. That's and, about it. and when they come in, I'm getting out." Yeah, so then I cleaned up shit for the next fucking 20 minutes. It was fucking everywhere. Wow, that seems like an amazing day. It was a great day. And I felt, I've never felt worse in my life. Because I was like, this is completely my fault. And the patient's family members just sitting there like, these people are trying to kill them. Well, the good and bad thing. So with nurses as family members in the room, it's either a hit or a miss. Yeah. Either they're extremely helpful and they understand what's going on. And um, they do that thing where they keep trying to help but you're like please just stop trying just to get help. out of the way mm-hmm. or they're like super picky and rude and just like and come turn and around are, and they're, not, they're really not a nurse <laughs> those are the usual ones who like went to cna school or exactly. like have been in nursing school for two semesters yeah. and they're like super fucking rude mm-hmm. so this lady was very helpful and she ended up helping clean the patient and do all of good. this shit and she was very nice but i felt so bad because i'm like you just saw some fucking rough shit yeah and at the end she was like oh you guys did such a good job thank you so much as i'm like covered in shit Oh my god! And I was like, "Do I? Is this my job? How many asses do I need to wipe?" 
How much shit do I need to step Rickety, in? Tickety, tickety, look at me. How many asses do I see? Truly. So, yeah. That's moral of like the story is, I did get seven units out of that, Eva. Well, that's good. I hope that was the last patient you saw all day. Oh, I packed it up. Yeah. Like, I'm done. Yeah. How many people did you see on listen today? One, <laughs> bitch. And I got seven <laughs> units. Don't ask me shit about my fucking productivity. <laughs> Fuck you and your productivity standards. Yeah. And I, yo, some days, are, some days you're with it and some days you're not. No, definitely not. Like, that's, oh, Jesus. I'm telling you that. And th- this is why health care workers are walking off the job. There's only listen. I'll wipe ass. I'll wipe ass till the cows come home. On account of it's part of my job, but now when I'm being disrespectful, disrespectful in the hat. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Please don't. I don't have any TPA in my house. <laughs> Not when I'm being disrespected in the workplace. On top of it, like yeah. pay me what I'm worth, or like buy me lunch. I'm wiping asses for God's sakes. Like <laughs> my geez. cousin the other day was talking about how uh, he's like I spend this much money a week on just lunch for my guys for the workers. Mm-hmm. And he was just talking about it. And I was like, well, I'll tell you that when my job was buying me lunch, I was working a lot harder and I liked being there a lot more. So no, no amount maybe of you pizza should keep gonna, buying your lunch. No amount of pizza is going to make it better. Use the money that you were going to buy pizza and give people a fucking raise. That's it. Very simple. I like sandwiches. So listen, I won't take your food and ask for a raise. You bitch. about to lose your job. You were about to, yeah. But anyway, that's my job. That's what I do. I is I <laughs> almost give people cardiac arrest, but get them Please back to bed. Yeah, no, Mm-mm. I won't. No, she converted herself right back out. It was fine. Yeah, I mean, you've had an eventful week, man. I, I know, but I all that to been... say, I can now read EKGs much better. The thing is, I feel like I have taught you how to read EKGs. No, you know what she would times. do? I would look at the monitor and I'd be like, is that real? She'd be like, no, that's not real. And then she'd just slowly back out of the room. Only if there was a family member that was there. If there was no family member, then I would be like, bitch, that's real. <laughs> and I would be like, "Do you? there's no P wave, bitch. Get him at. Get him at. <laughs> PBC, one, two, three. Ah, ah. That's a 5B run of VTAC. And I, I would tell you VTAC, that. VTAC, but if VTAC. a family member is there, I'm not going to say that just because it's going to freak people. I'm like, we need to go back now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember that one time that one of the physicians. Oh my God. So, Yo. Alyssa and I was, I was seeing a patient. Let me tell no, you how it abs- was you. You Let and another therapist. Let me tell you how absent she was when she was with her last student. I was not absent. I was there. I was right there. She wasn't absent, but she was standing outside the room. Because my student had to figure it out. Not fucking paying attention to me. I was. I was well, there was a, there was a patient where... They, they were clear to go in and see this patient, her and my student, right? My student's operating on my license. And I'm like, yes, go and see the patient. They sit the patient up at the edge of the bed. The intensivist comes no. and does rounds. And I'll tell you that Monica was like, hey, I'm going to go clear all the patients, make sure they're good to see. I did. So when I come back around, she's like, oh, yeah, I already checked in with this one. They're I good sure to did. see. Go ahead and get them up. And the, the, the nurse had cleared the patient. The intensivist came around to do rounds, and I'm standing outside the door. And then he's like, uh, Monica, can you please tell your friends to put the patient back? And I'm like, well, they're just, they're almost done with their eval. He's like, no, no, no. They need to put her back immediately. And I'm like, okay. So I politely walk over to the room and I'm like, hey guys, y'all almost finished? Uh, Dr. So-and-so wants her to get back in the bed like now. And so <laughs> this is like, yeah, yeah, we're almost finished. I was like, no, bitch, now. <laughs> Just, just throw because her ass back she, in there. she peeks her head around the curtain, and I know Rounds is outside. That's like yeah. seven seven doctors, pharmacists, all these important ass like people standing people. outside. Yeah, standing outside the room. She comes in. She's like, yeah, uh, you need to go ahead and get back now. And the, and the patient's and I was like, like, I don't want to get back in the bed. I literally, I was like, wait, like like right now or like in a second now? She goes, no, like right now. Like, like right now, like immediately. And I was like, what the? So I'm like trying to tell the patient, <laughs> okay, we need to lay back. She's like, no. And her neck was like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get back in she I have to lay my head a certain way And I'm like bitch get back in the fucking bed Before you die She's literally <laughs> hunchback of fucking Notre Dame Crunched yes. over herself Her uh, her God. body is contorted She's like I'm not going back She's like because my back and my neck And then this and I'm like I don't give a shit The intensivist is saying get you back in the fucking bed Also she's Clearly. not telling me Why they need to I don't know if it's a vitals thing I don't know if her heart's about to blow I don't know if he was just like nope she doesn't need to be up so i'm just like freaking the fuck out the long, lady won't go back to bed long story short she had an inoperable um <laughs> unstable aneurysm <laughs> i'll just tell you that <laughs> and it's not funny it's not. <laughs> but what the fuck <laughs> like, but the thing is that was not in her chart at the time we chart reviewed okay because i reviewed that patient and that was not in her chart and then as soon as 
He says that, and, and I'm listening in rounds, and they're like, yes, well, we did the echo, and we found this aneurysm, and we don't know if it can go at any moment. And I was like... <laughs> As I'm at the edge of the bed, like, okay, so go ahead and lift up your arms. As I'm on Amazon, and I'm like, did he just, is that, did he say what I just think he said? And he's like, Monica, you need to tell your friends, go ahead and get her back immediately. Cause, and then she ended up dying, like, I think the next week. It's not funny. No, no, she died because they, she, it wasn't an oper- it wasn't yeah, operable. And so operable. it, and it was going to blow regardless. So yeah. The thing is. You didn't speed it up though. So don't worry. Thank you. It wasn't that I hope that. not. Cause you told me I could fucking go in and see The her. nurse said. The nurse said, and the doctor had said, yes, you can go see her. And it wasn't until they got them damn echo results that they were like, yeah, bitch, no, don't touch her. So, we, yeah. you ha- when you work in an ICU, you just have to laugh sometimes. You because do. Because you're like, this job is insane. It, like, I, working in an ICU is like you're holding a bomb. All the time. A live bomb all the time. And you are. But it looks like a Care Bear. You, but and sometimes look, it looks like a bomb. But you're walking on egg crates like literally like literally. milk crates you're you're walking up milk crate crates, challenge, crate with challenge a bomb. holding a bomb and trying not to fall and drop it at the same time that's the icu sometimes you have it's fun sometimes it looks like you have a stuffed animal in your hand and halfway up the crates they're like it's a bomb exactly and you're like shit and then sometimes you're holding an active bomb it's like five seconds left and they're like no you're good go ahead and walk up the crates exactly. and you're like i don't think this is right yeah that's the and ICU. so i have to laugh to not fucking go insane yeah. Because these people's lives are literally in my hands, and these are little twenty-seven-year-old hands. And I think part of it is like the shock that did we just go through this? Like, <laughs> did that just happen? Like, what the fuck? Like, did that really just happen? Because that one time, my myself and a coworker had to run ourselves down the hallway with a man with his fucking legs in the air because he had coded, and we were like, "Well, he's like, how many doors from his room? We just gotta just he's in a rolly chair. Let's just fucking roll, roll his back. ass back down." And we're and I actually saw the security footage of us running down the hallway like a bunch of fucking idiots. But yeah, I mean, it's sometimes only stuff funny like that when it turns out okay. Yes, if they die, you feel like shit. But it, when they survive, you're just like, and it's on. Yeah, okay, it's adrenaline. It's all. It's pure adrenaline. Because you're just like, oh shit, yeah. and you gotta make shit happen, and then they end up being okay, and, you, and you're okay. You have to learn flight or flight response very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. You don't have time to pause or no. <gasps> and if you get no. covered in shit, you get covered in shit. Because you don't feel anything in the moment. Like I mean, I've lifted patients who are just as big as me, and I've tossed their ass into a to a fucking bed, and you don't feel it until uh-huh. the next day. So it's you a know, rush. It really is. It. I mean, it's funny, and then your heart calms down, and you're like, "Who? Your Apple Watch is like, breathe, yeah, breathe, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> but breathe. that's like, I mean, in the IC, everyone's sick, right? So it's kind of like, do you're very sick. Do we get you up to yeah. try to make you a little bit better on the off chance that it might make you a little bit worse? Or do we let you rot in the bed? I'll throw you an a feed with RVR. You we may three, but I will always get you to convert yourself out. Listen, that was just a cardio version waiting to happen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, anyway, you've had an eventful week. I did have yeah. an eventful week. Um, I still have a job. God bless. Yes, absolutely. God Praise good. the Lord. Um, I've been doing that TikTok manifestation bullshit sound a lot lately you know the one that's like i don't chase i don't chase i, I attract, attract. Did what you, belongs to hey, me hey, will hey. simply find me here's the thing there's a change to that so because you're basically casting a spell is what they say Ooh. so you're not supposed to say what belongs to you because karma could belong to you oh so they no say, they say change it and I'm say i'm sure that shit belongs what a, to me what aligns with me will simply find me Ooh. so i don't chase i attract what aligns with me will simply find me. I don't I'm chase. chase. Hey, I attract. What? What aligns with me will simply find One me. One time. I don't chase. Yep. I attract. Yep. What simply what? <laughs> and that's why we're not rappers. <laughs> no, definitely not. No, I like. We're that. keeping our day jobs. <laughs> but anyway, anything else for the people before we get out of here? No, that's good. Nothing else crazy. No, good, 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 good. Y'all have an amazing week. Um, continue to wear your mask. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. Anything watch else? your man you should watch your mouth you love saying that line i do don't know why i love her mm. have you even listened to a certified lover boy she's on a song she's like i'm gonna start charging child support the opposite way i'm gonna charge these uh, what does to, that even mean to be my son i don't know she just says I shit. It. i don't know i, I don't know it. i don't know i just love her yeah I hate onika mm-hmm. mirage mm-hmm. mickey mirage mm-hmm. interesting yep 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 all right, y'all. Well, y'all have an amazing week. <laughs> <laughs> Spread. This is your line. Spread love and light. And I hope what aligns to you boomerangs right back to your ass. Bing, 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 I bing, hope bing. you have a beautiful week. 
Absolutely. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. All right, my friends. Oh, my God. What the <laughs> fuck? You're going to hit yourself? Jeez. <laughs> <coughs>What is that? It's the thing. Because <laughs> mine is doing the same thing over here. I don't know why these fucking cheap ass beats by me. It's because yeah. you're just doing such good work for you. And you're it's already 1030. I know. It's so late. Oh. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of The Face Off with Fleming and Fowler. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at The Face Off Pod. Be sure to tune in to The Face Off every Tuesday where new episodes are released.